do you know wh where Bite Master stands on some of this? Like, is he? I, I'm assuming I'm he's. Oh, hey, Bite Master. We'll let him speak for himself. Yeah. Are you like you're really, really, really busy, right? I mean, let's let's face it. No, I'm just sitting on a beach, uh, you know, enjoying myself. <laughs> Are you all sitting on a beach counting his bit shares? <laughs> Well, you know, if you're buying stuff with those bit shares, that might actually be helpful. Um, <laughs> otherwise, actually, might no. Have... If I'm buying stuff with the bit shares, that means I'm selling. And oh, that's why I'm depressing the price. Oh well, buy it with BitUSD <laughs> then. So now we know why the correction <laughs> happened. Ah, uh, I cashed out. That's why we fell. Just well, kidding. Send some pictures of the ladies. Oh yeah. <laughs> You can at least recruit that way. Uh, I'm sure he knows master well. He's got surrounded by a bevy of beauties at all times. Well, Brian, you're there, so that probably helps, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the well, only pictures we see from from them is the pizzas. This is not, no, no, no good deal. I guess we could get started, but I will say that I am. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe we can keep. If you guys could st stick around out for like maybe 20 or 30 minutes after this. Um, I don't know if Adam's going to be on or not today, but I, I reached out to him. I haven't received a message back. Uh, but I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about what you guys think about the whole Beyond Bitcoin stuff. And I'm what, my, what I'm wanting to do is what I do, what I really love to do and what I have a passion to do is reach out to all these altcoins and essentially kind of say, hey, you can you can put a lot of value and build and actually essentially be able to hire people to build infrastructure that accepts your coin using Depos. Uh, and I've actually been doing that. We lost you, or at least I don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, be, if we could get somebody to like help edit with some of this content, it would be a lot more helpful too because then I can actually focus. I, I know uh, Gamey does this one, this Hangout, but I'm trying to see if we can get other people to kind of help out with that because I would love to, if I could out like start bringing on different quote-unquote altcoin developers and turn them into DAC developers and have them share drop some of their coins on the community and essentially get, you know, help uh, learning how to build infrastructure with depots and stuff like that uh, in return. It seems like it might not be a bad call, but we could talk about that after Byte Masters um, had his time to chat with everybody. With that said, do you want to give us some updates? All right. It has been a busy week since last week. Um, we believe we have fixed all of the significant crashing issues. I'm sure there will probably be a few crashes here and there, but um, the problems people were having last week are long gone. Um, we are about to uh, have another hard fork go into effect um, in just a couple hours. And when that happens, um, the markets will open for BitUSD versus BitBTC. The uh, requirement for, um, I'm just trying to give an update of where we were uh, on the grand scheme of things. Um, with the reduced depth requirement, that means we can open up uh, some more bit asset markets and they will now be able to trade against each other with the fixes that we have implemented. So you can do dollars versus BTC, BTC versus one, one versus dollars, uh, all on the blockchain. That should uh, cause the short demand, those wishing to leverage up on BitShares X to spread out among multiple assets. You'll create more arbitrage opportunities as people try to take advantage of the price discrepancies between um, the different markets. Um, the risk premium for bid assets should be the same across the spectrum which means that the uh, BitUSD to BTC price should be the same as the as all the other exchanges um, because both sides of the trade, BitBTC and BitUSD, are equally discounted and therefore the, the peg is going to hold there. So there's been a lot of discussion about the peg. Um, I believe that 
it's going to be stronger than ever now with the uh, restrictions we've put in place. So some of the things we've done on that front, <clears throat> if you are attempting to go short the dollar, uh, you can only go short if there is someone willing to go long at or above the price feed. Um, and the difference between your short price and the price feed is a fee that is collected by the network. Um, this fee is basically the premium that all, everyone, all the shorts competing to be the first in line to get, get the leverage position will bid up the fee. And now we have a market-based fee incentive placed on the shorts. Uh, this fee goes into what we have called the insurance fund in the case of the assets are devalued. However, I'd like to talk a little bit about future plans for that fund and uh, how we're going to use it to turbocharge BitShares X. Those rules are now in play and will take effect here uh, shortly which means that uh, the market's about to get pretty interesting. So what I really want to talk about now is the uh, BitUSD rewards system. It can also be thought of as a profit sharing, revenue sharing, or variable interest rate plan for BitUSD. And this is going to be a game changer, the feedback on the forum with uh, five plus pages so far today has been uh, incredibly positive. So I'd like to describe that for you now. The longer you hold BitUSD, you get a share of the, what used to be the insurance fund proportional to how much USD you have relative to the total USD supply and how long you've held it. So if you hold it for one year, you get uh, a share equal to, uh, so if you own 1% of the BitUSD and you hold it for one year, you can cash out 1% of the insurance fund or what used to be the insurance fund. Um, if you hold it for six months, then you can only cash out half as much. Now we've discussed the possibility of having a, a nonlinear curve. So there's financial incentive for holding it longer versus shorter. But uh, as it's implemented now, not in the 412 release, but probably the next release, um, it will be linear in nature. Uh, so what does this do? It, it, it changes the message we have for people. So let's talk about BitUSD today and then tomorrow. So today, if you buy BitUSD, uh, it's going to cost you right around the peg. You know, looking at the current market, it's going to cost you about $1 for a BitUSD. However, if you're trying to sell a BitUSD, you can probably only get 97 to 95 cents for it. So if you're a merchant and you're going to accept BitUSD at face value, you're um, only going to be able to convert that back to dollars at a, um, to a uh, 3 to 5% fee. And that fee is based upon the spread in the market. So what I like to tell people right now, BitUSD works like a prepaid credit card. Uh, it's got the same expenses for merchants. There's a the, that, that small fee that you merchants have to pay for credit card processing. They'd continue to pay it today, but they wouldn't have any volatility risk. So BitUSD has tremendous utility uh, as a payment system. It's competitive with credit cards right now, and um, it's incredibly useful for those wanting to trade on the system. Like we already discussed how the spread on BitUSD versus BitShares X or the dollar is not relevant to trading within the system. So day traders, speculators, those wanting to hedge against the volatility, hedge against bubbles, they can trade on the internal exchange and that creates demand for BitUSD. So it's incredibly useful already. But with the addition of the rewards program, it's about to get uh, turbocharged. And so let's look at what we've done. Right now, there are about 485,000 BitUSD that have been created and backed by BitShares X. Uh, total fees collected is $1,800. It amounts to about 0.4% uh, um, of the BitUSD has been collected as fees from market operations. If you look at that over two weeks and you project that out for a uh, 
year, you're looking at almost 10% return on your BitUSD. You know, if transaction fees and market fees associated with trading BitUSD are flat, and this was the first week or so with a very buggy client and almost no trading activity. Uh, over the course of the next year, people will be able to transfer BitUSD from one person to another person without having to have any BitUSD involved to pay the transaction fee with BitUSD. And those will also go into the pot. Trading volume will increase. And of course, the new short fees that are going to be put into effect this afternoon will be also adding to the pot. All told, you're looking at a very healthy rate of return for BitUSD holders if the current ratios hold up. That's going to create huge demand for people to buy and hold BitUSD. You now have a decentralized bank with the features of Bitcoin and a higher rate of return, but the price stability of the dollar. Um, that's going to force the market peg straight up to the median price feed because there's going to be so much demand for buying BitUSD to get that rate of return. People are going to be buying it all up at parity, and then the shorts are going to enter the picture and compete to provide that service to them. So this is really going to drive the peg, uh, decrease the spread to practically nothing, and uh, change the uh, benefits for the average Joe. So I'm really excited about what it means for BitShares X, BitUSD, and the system as a whole. So this, is, uh, this essentially changes the situation where uh, people are going to have an incentive to really want to, instead of keeping their dollars in their regular everyday 1.0 bank account down the street, they're going to want to exchange it into cryptocurrency, put it into BitUSD, and hold it there because they actually will start gaining interest again on their money. <laughs> Exactly. Not only on their dollars, but also on their gold and their silver. My God. Gold and silver giving you interest rate uh, back for holding <laughs> it? That's beautiful. Do you think we can someday completely neglect the price feed and let the market decide by the one hour average or moving average uh, decide so that we can stop Manip yeah, in some way manipulate the price feed from the delegates? I think that once the market reaches a amount of liquidity and depth, um, that it, the price feed is not going to be relevant at all. Um, in the current system, delegates can continue to produce it, um, but it's going to be less and less relevant. I think we'll probably need the price feed until the USD market is tens of billions of dollars in depth and therefore manipulating the market will be very, very difficult. I don't think we'll be able to remove it in the short term um, because the demand to short or leverage BitShares X is so incredibly high. Now, what okay, so, oh, so ahead, we need sir. to wait, for, we need to wait for, for a healthy market and a healthy supply for each of those yeah, bit assets until we can yeah, finally kill those feats at the end. Right, you need to have enough liquidity to absorb the entire short demand at the pegged price. Um, if you can do that, then um, the peg will hold on its own. If you can't do that, then the peg will slowly start to drift down. Uh, right now we had the problem where um, because the idea is so new and unproven that the initial consensus is that it should follow the dollar. But if there's so much short demand that without the peg, people keep shorting it, the consensus might form that it should go to zero and then go to zero because no one's willing to bet against it. So you definitely need the price feeds early on to uh, keep the market fair and keep the consensus on. There and people see that the... Uh, price feed restriction is almost never used on day-to-day -day operations. Um, then it's kind of like training wheels. Initially, you, you keep bumping them on the ground, but as you learn to ride the bike, they never touch anymore. And whether they're there or not, you, know, you start to have confidence that you don't need them. 
Now you can start to increase the range of the wheel, training wheels uh, and uh, until they're practically not there at all. Yeah, that analogy is nice. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned something that really, uh, you said something about a market depth essentially of 10 billion plus bit USD. And you mentioned something on the forums about BitUSD when it's brought into existence, uh, how it increases the value of BitShares X. Can you talk a little bit about what you see that doing to the market cap? Demand for BitUSD requires someone willing to short, and someone willing to short is holding two times that value off the market. Um, someone willing to lend credit or store their value in BitUSD on the system, that value gets transferred into the share price. So if there are $10 billion worth of BitUSD in circulation, there's $20 billion worth of collateral backing it. Um, and the collateral is probably a small percentage of the total value of, uh, total BitShares X, because there's, of course, uh, BitShares X being used as collateral for all the different bit assets, and the, the BitShares X is held in an unleveraged state, um, which right, right now, because you cannot use your collateral to buy and cover your position, uh, represents at least 50% of the collateral out there exists in a uncollateralized state. I would contend that every bit USD in existence means that there is uh, $3 worth of BitShares X increase. So basically we have now an incentive to hold BitShares X for the long term. And on the other hand, with the yeah, US dollar reward, we also have incentive to together with the market pack and stability, stability of the BitUS dollar, we have an incentive to also hold bit US dollar. Is this right? Yes. Holding bit dollars is uh, you profit from all the dollar activity in the system. Anytime someone makes a transfer with dollars, every time someone places a bid or an ask with dollars, every time there's market fees generated in dollars, you get a cut of it. Uh, I read about this that I can uh, pay my transaction fees in bit US dollars too. How can I achieve this? Is this already implemented? It's implemented in the blockchain, but the uh, current wallet does not support it by default. The next version of the wallet to be released will automatically pay your fees with BitUSD. Or the respective asset you're transmitting, I guess. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. And this is actually going to work with gold and silver and every other asset as well. Yep. So we're not just talking about bit USD, we're talking about bit yuan, we're talking about bit euros, bit rubles, bit gold, silver, um, and all of these when they're brought into existence are going to hold 200% uh, BTSX in cloud and thus increase the price by a similar in a similar fashion. Exactly. Do you see any ways of attacking this? Have you guys talked about potential uh, concerns as far as... Um, I mean, you, I don't know that you're making a lot of friends with this, <laughs> especially listening to some of the Bitcoin people. Um, I'm kind of curious if you guys have considered things that could be done that might hinder this from the outside. It's a decentralized network. Uh, at this point in time, uh, the cat's out of the bag. You could uh, run me over with a bus and someone else will pick up the flag and carry it home. So uh, I think it is it is done. <laughs> There's nothing they, they can do at this point in time. Uh, they can slow it down, try to do regulations, but all the regulations they apply to us would apply to Bitcoin. Um, they can't make it illegal everywhere in the world. So it will continue to exist somewhere. It's got such huge utility. It's uh, especially with the returns on dollars. 
that um, I think people are going to, it's going to be like drugs. You can't stop it. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about drugs, but uh, I, I, <laughs> that, that, that sounds really good. Uh, so essentially you're saying that the government cartels will want to take control of it and, and issue it themselves and put people in prison for it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Does anybody have any questions about this? This is this is here for all of you, and I don't know who. Uh, I see a few new faces in here, but Bite Master spends his time here. He really wants to be able to to answer your questions in real time and really have a, a broad discussion. So don't be afraid to ask the questions or even type them in the message board, and I'll ask them if you feel like you don't want to ask them yourself. I actually have a technical question. Um, uh, I understand the concept of the account key and the account private key and Titan and the, that we are uh, using these yeah, stealth addresses and all those um, addresses are derived from, from the account key. Um, uh, but I read on the forum, giving some, some support lately, that the market transactions and these addresses are somehow different. Could, could you elaborate a little about how, how those are generated and uh, how I can work with those transactions? Those are generated um, using a hierarchical wallet. It just generates the next key in the sequence relative to your account private key. Um, but it's not derived using a elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman like the transfers are. Because it's going to and from you, there's no re you don't need to secretly communicate to someone else what the key you're using is. You just generate a new key and use it. Ah, okay, so that's it. Ah, I see. Okay. I, I thought it's more like like being some 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 strange multi-signature thing because somehow the transaction goes from from me to someone else once the order is executed and and things like this. But I think the blockchain is handling this a, a lot simpler, I guess. Yeah. Thanks. Talking about the signature thing, maybe a stupid question, but I was wondering uh, if there's a possibility to have to do uh, cold signing of uh, transactions, so similar to how Armory uh, does it. Cold signing of transactions is not currently implemented, but nothing prevents it from happening. I think uh, those types of features are. Uh, features that can be implemented Planet. at any time by anyone. Uh, they don't require blockchain changes. Right now, our primary focus is to, as quickly as possible, stabilize on a set of blockchain rules that don't have to be changed or modified. Uh, and then after we've done that, we can declare version 1.0, and the blockchain can have a much more rigorous process before hard forks are implemented. Currently, uh, hard forks are implemented more or less any time I feel it's necessary for whatever reason I feel is necessary. Um, but those, that needs to change so that people can start depending upon a particular set of rules uh, in the future. So I forgot where I was going with all that. So you're saying you want you there needs to be confidence. All right. So the um, where I'm going with that is that we're focusing on the uh, blockchain features uh, and the features that allow people to build the rest of the infrastructure. Bitcoin ended up having web wallets and Armory and all these other wallets without any development fund whatsoever. Uh, I believe that the BitShares development fund should be focused primarily on protocol work that there is a ton of money to be made for someone to implement a blockchain.info version of BitShares. Uh, and I'm hoping someone will do that at a profit um, because those would be a hosted solution. The financial incentive is already there to make it happen. Um, so that's partially why we're not currently focusing on armory type functionality because there's money for to be made for others to provide that. So do you think... Uh, I've been really interested in the, the concept of delegates being able to um, essentially support the building of essential infrastructure. Uh, 
and you're talking about a development fund. How does that play? How do those two play into each other? Uh, do, do they t uh, play into each other at all? Do delegates send fees to this? How does it work? Right now, the development fund is the initial stake we got um, in BitShares X uh, for the PTS we held. So, so when that when that fund is gone, <clears throat> the network will have to support itself entirely from transaction fees and delegates. Um, currently, that fund is uh, several million strong, and as the market cap of BitShares X grows, uh, I'm hoping it grows faster than we're spending it. Okay. Um do you foresee a, a, va a, a actual value in delegates? Because I, I've really grasped, uh, grabbed onto this concept of using delegates to help build infrastructure. Are, are there better ways for delegates uh, helping the ecosystem in your opinion? Because I see like, from what I see, I see four different types of delegates. Essentially, you have a burning delegate who burns funds to, to essentially raise all boats by increasing the value of all BTSX by taking some out of circulation. Then you have one that would go with reduced fees, uh, which uh, essentially would help with liquidity and, and trading volume, in my opinion. This is what I see. And then you would have delegates that would be so, so like charity delegates that would um, essentially be able to fund different charities uh which would end up looking, looking good, good on, on on the bitshares ecosystem itself and almost like a free advertisement uh and it also would help uh keep regulators at bay because uh actually like funding cancer research and things like this it's going to be really uh it's going to show uh people who are aware of this stuff that uh bitshares is actually helping uh, and then the what I see is the infrastructure delegates, uh, and that's kind of how I see it. How do you see it? I think that at this stage in the game, the delegates have two roles. Make sure that the network is stable and functioning and updates in a timely manner, which they've done an amazing job. Uh, updates get released, and everyone's upgraded within 12 hours. That's quite impressive for almost... Uh, yeah, you know, probably 40, 50 people uh, to be that responsive. Um, it requires a lot of time for the delegates to do that, and at the current rate of pay, uh, it's surely not compensating them for their effort. I think as things mature, uh, almost all the funds will need to go into the development fund um, or the marketing fund, uh, and those are the two things delegates should be promoting. Uh, I think the main thing that delegates can be doing right now is uh, getting out the vote, getting people to take the time to vote for them, because uh, that will help secure the network. Could we actually get um, some some people who are running the delegates, like a delegate slate uh, that we could post in the Mumble so people could actually vote straight from the Mumble server? You can already publish a delegate slate with your... Uh, account if someone gives you a thumbs up and then they vote you'll vote however you recommend hmm. sounds good any questions for anybody phenike i know you got questions man testing oh, hey brian hear me hear you well yeah, sorry, I'm in the middle of another meeting, but I'd, I'd like some more details on how that. De I, I heard Byte Master's detail of how to delegate your vote to someone else, but walk me through a little more of the mechanics so I understand better what's going on, if you could. Uh, we're going to be updating the GUI to make it even easier, but um, right now there's a console command that allows you to publish your slate, and then uh, if the user chooses to vote recommended and they've given your account a thumbs up, it will take the slate you've published and vote accordingly. So you so, have to okay, publish so a slate with a, uh, a, a command line option? Right. Yeah, go to the console and, and there's a wallet publish slate or something similarly named that will publish your slate to your account 
and then anyone can read the slate ID in your account um, and the uh, wallet will automatically detect that so when you say vote recommended you go through all the accounts check to see if there are any um, recommendations there incorporate them and vote accordingly so it's difficult to publish a slate right now it's easy to use a published slate just give give someone a thumbs up if you want to follow them so uh, fuzz if you want to uh, publish a slate you can, you use the console command once or anytime you change who you're voting for everyone else can just uh, give you a thumbs up and vote recommended oh so do they have to uh, give me a thumbs up every time I change it or is it something that changes dynamically it changes dynamically um, but they do have to it'll automatically update when they make a transaction they um, you changing your votes doesn't change their votes right. can you currently have more than one person recommending votes for slate yes and it will combine the results uh, of both based on whoever has the most in common recommendations. So if one delegate is recommended by three people, he'll have higher priority than a delegate only recommended by one person. So what you're cur you currently have selected, is that like your own slate? So is that weighed in equally with uh, the other slates or do the... If you, if you have people currently thumbs up and you say vote recommended, you aggregate your own slate, everyone you've voted up, with everyone everyone else has voted up, removing anyone you voted down from it, and then if you publish your slate, you publish the combined result of everyone. But then, I, I haven't actually used the voting a whole lot yet, and so if I, I have, but I, I, approval voting and everything, so if I have 10 people selected, and then I click on someone else's recommended vote, those two basically will have equal weighting, the slate that I chose, and my own current existing selections will have equal weighting, and then if I was to choose a second slate from someone, that would also have equal weighting, or? Yeah, yeah they'd all have equal weighting, but if one delegate is in all three slates, your slate, and recommended by both of the other people that you've voted for, um, then uh, they'll be in your final slate. So it's intelligent. You just give a, if you trust someone to be a delegate or to recommend delegates to you, give them a thumbs up. If you don't trust them, then give them a thumbs down. And otherwise, just vote recommended. I think uh, what he meant was: is it possible to override a couple of the choices uh, that from the generated ones? You can override the ones from the generated ones by voting, uh, basically giving a thumbs down. It will automatically remove them from the generated slate. Well, that's really nice. So essentially it makes it so if you trust somebody, you can vote for all of their delegates except for a couple people that, uh, or a couple delegates that you disagree on. So it, it essentially makes it so you don't have to do necessarily all the legwork of of researching all the best delegates, but if you find one that you feel is causing problems, you can easily uh, and quickly uh, solve that problem. Isn't this basically setting up a web of trust compared to what we have in, in, in uh, GPG or PGP? It is a web of trust of sorts. Wow. That's nice. Uh, I like it. I like it. Um, does anybody have any questions along this line of thinking? Uh, any murderistic ask the question here. Um, how long does the insurance fund run? Indefinitely or as long as there are transactions supporting the fund, etc.? The insurance fund is being phased out in, f in favor of the rewards program for BitUSD holders. So instead of having BitUSD with a fund that in the event of a black swan will provide USD to cover the shorts uh, that have insufficient collateral, uh, but USD holders are compensated in advance with the rewards or interest or whatever you want to call it. Um, so the theory being that either the uh, rate of return compensates you for any risk 
that you experience or the insurance pool would have been undercapitalized in the first place. So um, I think that the rate of return will be huge. It will make black swans less likely to occur. And uh, if they did happen and some of the BitUSD, say BitUSD became only 95% collateralized, uh, the rate of return would still be there and it would slowly pay it off the amount and parity would be reached again. So uh, I don't view, I, I view the rewards program as a superior form to the insurance fund. You're compensating people for the risk they are taking instead of uh, trying to keep all the profits for yourself and not compensating them for uh, the risk. In effect, what the insurance pool was doing was is acting like a giant savings account of, of the DAC in dollars. Um, the problem is the DAC doesn't really want to own dollars. It wants to own its own shares because in theory its shares will go up faster. Uh, and the DAC gets all the benefit from those dollars that are sitting there, but the BitUSD holders weren't getting any benefit whatsoever other than knowing that the DAC has some extra money on hand in case things get bad. But um, now BitUSD holders benefit directly. They're compensated for any perceived risk of a bank run with the interest they are receiving. So I think uh, it's a better alternative to the insurance fund. Wow. I tend to agree. It, it, it's interesting how much yeah, brain he has already put into this. Um, I feel like I get only 70% yeah, of this. <laughs> um, which brings me to the question, can we, or in particular, can you and your team set up or create like a, a white paper for all the yeah, market mechanics and all this yeah, um, consequences you just mentioned? Because I have the feeling that I really have to, to read this over and over to, to get it. I, I, I probably need some more weeks or months to, to get to the level of understanding where you are currently. And uh, something like a white paper might, might be very helpful at that point. Not only for me, but also for others. I think uh, a white paper would be a very good thing to get down on paper. The rules are changing in a evolving at a very rapid clip right now, so uh, it's difficult to get a white paper to keep up. But um, I am publishing them on the forum on a daily basis and trying to answer questions for anyone that has it. It would be very good for someone to aggregate the latest and try to keep it up to date because um, the information is out there, but obviously I only have so much manpower. So uh, I do agree that once we have a stable 1.0 version, that thorough documentation of how it works and why it works should be out there and explain to people. Okay, so maybe the community should uh, start right ahead and, and collect all those yeah, posts and maybe we can write something together and have you proofread us. Yeah, put it on the wiki. Uh, get the wiki up to date and right. um, explain you know, how does the peg work, what happens in this situation or this situation, what kind of rate of return, you know, just back of the envelope calculations. And, uh, you know, eventually that can be distilled down into simpler and simpler messages. Uh, I think I've got it, you know, boiled down to now that the uh, BitUSD can be thought of just like a credit card with a 3% fee, uh, and merchants can accept it at parity. People already understand that system, and uh, they already accept that system. And now we're just taking it better. Would it be better to say it's like a debit card uh, where the funds that you're holding uh, give you an interest rate? It, well, right now, it's like a prepaid credit card where Roger. the merchant pays a, a 3% fee. You, you pay full price for the card and the merchant's paying a 3% fee um, when you use it. Um, so the way it works now is you pay full price to get the bit USD. And the merchant is only able to sell it for 97%. Um, same thing. Um, but with now that it's interest paying, um, it's much more marketable. So people are willing to buy it at a dollar. And so the merchant can sell it at a dollar. Sure. So the merchant actually can essentially get his or her fees back. Yes. Myself. Yes. We, we've... 
making it much better for the merchant. And the, expects the, the expectations are that uh, with improved liquidity and a bigger market that uh, the fees will drop for the merchants as well. It, it, the fees will not be uh, in percentage terms anymore. They'll be fixed. That's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that uh, fixed price, is that something that gets voted in or is that something that will be hard-coded in the, in the blockchain? So I say that again? Uh, the fees that uh, will be needed uh, for the transaction fees, will those be uh, somehow voted in or decided by consensus or is it something that will be hard-coded in the blockchain? There are no fees hard-coded in the blockchain. All fees are enforced only by delegates willing to include your transactions. So vote for delegates that set reasonable fees. Ah, oh, nice. Out of curiosity, we've had this discussion. It's uh, a lot of people have been having the discussion kind of behind the scenes and a little bit in open on the forums. Uh, essentially, you have the BitShares toolkit and any DAC that is created with it is is uh, recommended that they give 10% to the PTS holders uh, and 10% to the AGS holders uh, in the initial Genesis block um, for doing so. Is that the recommendation if something were to essentially be uh, like essentially for like BitShares X if it were cloned? and given to or cloned for another altcoin because there's been a lot of talk about uh cloning it for litecoin and um different different coins other than litecoin but I, on one side i see it as almost like you know you have these different coins that are almost like almost like towns you know and most altcoins are ghost towns because they're burning all their money and giving it to miners and then those miners are burning it and paying it to uh, electricity companies instead of actually reinvesting it but essentially you could have in each town you know their local bank and exchange and it almost seems like that's what you're doing only on a on a on a larger level with bts x but I, I ask myself the question it is essentially clonable right and if it is clonable if i'm if i'm not if i'm correct with this what do you foresee happening or what do you think are the positives the negative sides side effects to it for btsx holders and so on it is entirely clonable um but all exchanges have a huge network effect so if you clone it you're going to have to find market makers in your clone uh and it's like everyone wants to centralize in exchanges to get the lowest spreads least volatility and the highest liquidity and all those other factors that come with size. BitShares X being the first is uh, has a long advantage right now of uh, getting the capital and infrastructure around it necessary to reach that critical mass. I think clones would have to offer significant new value. Um, so I, I kind of view it like clones of BitShares X will be like clones of Bitcoin. Uh, yes, it's possible. Yes, they'll have more value than straight altcoins, but um, they'd have to compete on some other metric. Would it be possible to do something like cross-chain trading with those forks or those clones, essentially? Yes. Would that, would that change when, when, when we are featured, When we are fully feature complete, cross-chain trading will be easy, easy to do, and a bit USD on one chain for bit USD for another should be interchangeable. And how does that affect clones or does it? It helps clones get into the ecosystem um, because it's easier to get money into and out of them. So essentially... There, there, there is another way where, how clones should, could make sense. Like Bytemaster said, if there is a completely different way to do a market or some would have a completely different market mechanic, then that would, be, uh, that would need to be another blockchain then. Right. Just like people innovate with proof of work, trying to come up with better proof of work algorithms, people will probably innovate with different reward paradigms. Well, and that's an interesting thing to me. This is actually one of the, the things that I'm very interested in, because if you see Bitcoin, the ecosystem, the way the ecosystem works, um, and this is what I think is wonderful about the share dropping idea that you guys came out with, 
um, or, or I, I guess tweaked from airdropping is essentially you uh, with Bitcoin when a clone is made you have to risk everything to invest in that clone and it's really extremely risky and most people lose their their butts in it um, because you know it, it's, it's really up to the developers and the community whether anything actually goes goes on with this coin if it, if there are services that adopt it you know it takes a lot of work to achieve that network effect but with this you're essentially saying you know the more uh pt pts and ags holders get it the more of a network effect you're essentially bootstrapping your ecosystem with is that is that an, a correct assessment there are several aspects to network effect. Uh, dropping to PTS and AGS holders uh, has people that are likely to want to hold your system, but these same people can also turn into dumpers of your system if they don't see it as innovative or if they see it as copying uh, something that they already have stake in. So if I'm an AGS holder and someone uh, clones BitShares X and does nothing but rename it, um, I probably hold my stake just to see, you know, all right, what kind of marketing or uh, strategy they're going to have with it. But if it doesn't look like it's anything other than a clone, uh, I don't have interest in that one hurting or dividing the market cap. So I want to stay in my current system. Um, so you, you need to have innovation. The AGS and PTS holders are those that are able to recognize innovation and are more sophisticated than the other altcoin holders, right? Yeah. Uh, the other altcoin holders don't realize that they're participating, holding stock in a company that's losing money. Um, and they're trading and playing greater pool games. Those people don't recognize the value or know why what they're holding has value. So it doesn't make sense to drop on them. Um, but really, you want to drop on PTS and AGS holders as a way of earning good favor uh, of giving back to the people who made the foundation of your system possible, the toolkit. So it's an ethical, it's a, at first it should be an ethical concern, but when, for those who it's not, an, for those who, for whom ethics really don't matter, it, it becomes a, a matter of accessing and tapping into a community that really can, can distinguish value from just a clone that's that essentially offers nothing new exactly and you are here teaching all of us these things and everybody's coming in here and learning directly from you about this stuff so it's in essence you're contributing and all of us are contributing to that value by just attending these and asking questions on the forums and being active correct um, I, I have a question. If I, I apologize, I was late. If it hasn't been asked already, I just asked on the forum. The, there was recent discussion about the interest or dividends or rewards for BitUSD, uh, but then uh, I just saw a post, you know, from Dan saying that uh, there will be a five percent inactivity fee for BitUSD. Uh, it seems a bit contradictory. Can you can you speak to that? I just responded to that post on the forum. Um, the Inactivity fee is there primarily to prove that the private key is still held and that the user is still active. You know, your banks also assess an inactivity fee if um, you don't use the account uh, and they eventually seize your funds if it's nothing there at all, no activity at all. So it's basically proof of life. You can avoid the fee entirely by collecting your interest once a year. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. So people have an Oh, go ahead, sorry. A side effect of this is I, I just recently also mentioned the, the inactivity fee on, on the Reddit post, when I rem if I remember correctly. Another side effect is that you basically do not lose any shares. In Bitcoin, there are lots of coins that are just yeah inaccessible or usually called lost because no one has a private key for that. And uh, as we have a, a proof of stake scheme with all shares already out, we need to somehow, or the devs, developers, need to somehow make sure that those are not diminished too much. That's my understanding, basically. And, and over time, if you lose your private key, over time, the, the, the funds in there are 
yeah, refed back into into circulation by by these fees. That's my understanding. Right. The, there are several things here. Uh, maintaining a balance in the blockchain is not free. Um, it requires everyone to store a copy and have it on disk and in RAM. Um, so, uh, and we also want to encourage people to update their votes and collect their interest in a timely manner. So there's costs to the network for users who are not doing, not active. Um, the fact that you recover the funds is not quite so, is not so important. Um, you know, lost Bitcoin just represents infinite demand for that Bitcoin. No, you don't, it's not going to be sold. Problem is the market doesn't know that, so it's hard to price it into the blockchain, but uh, eventually it gets absorbed as people realize, hey, these funds haven't been touched in 10 years. I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, so eventually lost coins get priced into the system anyway. Uh, but the reason why we're charging the inactivity fee is really proof of life and uh, to encourage people to keep their collect their interest and stay involved. Will proof of life also be used to uh, leverage dormant accounts? Because uh, as you know, there was that huge rush of people registering everything under the sun when this first came out. I am conflicted about the desire to um, expire accounts that don't update annually. Um, I think on one hand it makes a lot of sense, and on the other hand it's a potential uh, security vulnerability. So perhaps one year, uh, if you don't renew it, then it expires, and then another waiting period before someone else can use it. Um, so uh, I don't know. There's some some discussion on what should be done there. Fortunately, we've got another ten months to figure that out. Um, yeah, I, I I understand that dilemma uh, as as a person that you know often. Uh, buys equities and then doesn't look at them again for for years. Uh, it would, I would, I would be less comfortable with a system where I registered a, an account and stored value in it and knew that there was a possibility at some point it could just go away uh, if I don't pay attention to it. Um, out of curiosity, I, this is this brings up a good point as far as holding um, these different assets. Are these different assets going to have? Uh, like different attributes where if you hold bit gold, it'll give you a different interest rate or um... they, all, they all have independent reward rate rates depending upon the transaction volume and the market fees paid for that particular asset. So they're all going to be independent. Um, I could see the argument that um, losing your rewards or basically limiting your maximum reward to one year is um, price efficient for those who want to put money in there. All right, so you don't lose 5%, but you're, you've are you maxed out your max yield. Uh, you can't get any interest beyond one year. Um, that's sort of a opportunity cost versus a real cost. Um, so those, those are the types of decisions we're going to have to decide on over the next couple of months. And it's and it's interesting to me because Riverhead brought up a really good point uh, when he said, essentially, you know, you you buy an equity and just sit on it as a long term investment, and you don't plan on moving it. And it, it brings to mind, you know, gold and silver as those are qualities as far as like long term investments. And it's more, you know, an STHF scenario that most people will hedge their um, portfolios with gold and silver for that reason. Um, so I could kind of see an argument for potentially having something like bit gold, bit silver, and things that are traditionally held for long-term type of investment, um, not having those types of uh, fees or you know um, issues. Is there anything to that, or is is there a, a, an error there, in my there thinking? There is also here? the incentive to make sure that your private keys and your passwords are not forgotten. If you access it at least once annually, which you should be doing for tax purposes anyway, then you don't have a problem. I guess it's also conceivable that with the uh, the API, you know, other clients are going to come out and other people offer services of basically uh, pinning your account to, to stop it from going inactive. Right. There's ways that you can maintain it and third parties can automate the process for you. 
So um, I think that the market will find solutions to all the problems for the people that want to pay someone not to have to think about renewing it annually for some small price. But I think the network as a whole is healthier if people renew it annually. Uh, and it also means that if funds are lost because, oh, I lost my private key, oh, I forgot my password, that uh, that turns into profits for the network and uh, returns for everyone. So I think the benefits to the network are greater than the uh, costs to those who want to set it and forget it. Yeah, I think that the 5% back the network is is actually really good because so, with Bitcoin, they're only producing so many. If they do not have a scheme like this, eventually there will be no more accessible Bitcoin with enough time. Well, it's easily indivisible, so that's a problem that uh, solved the other way around. But it's, it's not. It only goes out to so many decimal places, right? Yeah, but that's an easy thing to change. It's just a definition. It would require a hard fork to uh, it would require a hard fork of Bitcoin to do that. I suspect what um, then it'd be limited by the number of bits in a sixty-four bit number, right. um, which would uh, Bitcoin would run into. So you'd have to go to greater than sixty-four bit numbers, and that's a complete change of the entire um, transaction structure. So yes, it's possible, but it, uh, it would be a hard fork. Yeah, but it's not, it's not a logical problem in that sense. It's not unsolvable. Right. Just, it would not violate the consensus. I'm just wondering, um, are we going to be able to have laddered transactions for the delegates so that we could probably put mortgage securities in, in the bit asset universe? I haven't thought too much about uh, that, that particular okay. aspect. I actually have to get going, so I'll take one more question. I'd like to know if ByteMaster is interested in speculating the Ether uh, pricing. Obviously, Bitcoin's gone up significantly, or BitShares, rather, has gone up significantly since Ether Genesis block sale ended. But I wonder, what do you think the chances are that Ether will price above or below market cap of BitShares X at, during the first month when it launches and is trading? My expectations are that uh, Ether is a buy the rumor, sell the news proposition. Um, that the initial demand for it will be less than the demand for BitShares X and that its growth curve will be slower. Um, I think it has a very high initial price, uh, probably overvalued as a concept at the IPO. Um, but once a few killer apps appear on the Ether network, uh, I think it has a sustainable business model. It's sort of, um, well, sorry, I take that back. If they continue to rely on proof of work, I think it's dead in the water. Um, but it'll be interesting to see where we are versus where they are. I think our development fund could easily be larger than theirs um, by the time they launch. Do they already have an estimate for the time of launch? Is there something in F already? Uh, I believe February is what they're estimating. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, as always, Byte Master, for coming on. Uh, and... Thanks a lot. Thank you, Byte Master. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. I'll uh, catch you next week. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Um, and for anybody who wants to stay behind, I'm I'm actually Bo Shen's in here, and I'm hoping that maybe I can talk to him a little bit about uh, or bring in, him into the conversation a little bit for all of us. And uh, if you guys have any projects you guys are working on, I'd like to give you guys the opportunity also to talk about those things. Um, but Bo Shen's actually one of the. Uh, lead people on the China team. So it's it's interesting to see what's happening in China, uh, considering I don't speak Mandarin, and it's as foreign to me as any language I've ever seen. Um, so, <laughs> so it's very helpful to me to see if uh, he potentially has anything. Are you there, Bo Shen? Oh, he's muted. Yeah, I asked him during when he first came on. His uh, I think he had push to talk disabled, 
So I think he muted himself after I told him to, after I asked him if he could potentially um, turn off, turn on push to talk. But if he's not here, which it seems like he might be AFK, um, if you guys have any projects that you're working on or anything that you're interested in talking about, um, this is f here for ByteMaster and for you guys to talk to ByteMaster, but it's also here for us to kind of start forming teams to collaborate on different things that we think are about, are going to give value to the network uh, and to all of our investments. So if you guys have anything you'd like to talk about, please speak up and maybe we can collectively come up t uh, with some solutions or, or find some common grounds that we can work together on. Actually, I'd like to, to ask for some, some assistance uh, concerning the charity delegates. Um, you might have uh, seen that I already, or the charity delegates actually already collected almost 500 US dollars. Actually, I, they collected BTSX and uh, I traded them for, for a bit US dollars. And um, I published uh, my plan for the next weeks in how to spend those uh, bit US dollars. And um, who, who of you already saw that post actually? Can, can you give me a feedback here? I'm going to get, I have, I'm going to actually uh, link it here for everybody uh, because it, it was a pretty interesting post the way that you're uh, looking at doing it. Okay, so basically to give you a heads up and why I was so delayed is um, what, I'm, what I'm planning to do is actually, um, I'd, this is also because of transparency actually, um, I'd like Let's get, as an example, let's go for Sean's outpost. This is uh, one of the first that all will probably uh, receive an, a payout. Um, they publish uh, a Bitcoin address. And to this Bitcoin address, there's a Bitcoin public key. And I take this Bitcoin public key and uh, basically transform it into a BitShares X public key. You can do this because both of them are working on the same yeah, crypto algorithm. And uh, I registered uh, a sub-account uh, within the charity account. And uh, what this, this uh, sub-account has uh, is a public... Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Xerox. <laughs> yeah, this, this uh, sub-account has as a public key, this uh, public key that comes from the Bitcoin address oh. from, from Sean's output. So basically, uh, what this will enable is that everyone that has a Bitcoin address can all can can use or can be given a, a, a name on the BitShares X blockchain, so that uh, I can register a name for them and they can redeem everything that co comes with this name by just importing the Bitcoin private key of the address. So this is how I plan to basically spend the funds for Sean's outpost at least and some others that I registered a name for them and want to transmit uh, some BitUS dollars to that account and they can redeem with their uh, private key from, from the Bitcoin they already use. Um, my question now is, all of this comes with the difficulty that they need to use the private key in a software that might not trust. Um, is, uh, to any of the importers, uh, maybe contact Toast. We had a discussion a, month, a couple of months back about uh, a similar issue about uh, importing your private keys in DAX. And uh, there was apparently is there is a way to sign a message with your private key and use that message to import your stuff. But I don't know if it's uh, it's uh, if just it. theory or if it's already implemented. But I, I don't in, think in theory it should be the same. Yeah, I remember the discussion. It was uh, back from from the HES uh, uh, donations and uh, importing in third yeah. party uh, software. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and attack I'm, fact that a, uh, an untrustworthy duck could then uh, steal all your uh, keys. Yeah, but um, this is not. This is basically not our problem here because Bitchers X should be a trusted 
uh, software in, in that sense. But how do we tell them that this software can be trusted? Because they basically have to expose the private key of their Bitcoin address. Or is well, this... maybe, uh, maybe they are the people you can contact and ask them if they want to have a different, register their own account on this system where the funds can be sent and if they're interested. So that, actually, choice up to them. that actually sounds like a good idea because if you think about it, once one of the biggest hurdles to getting use it, uh, getting this system used, is to get people to register accounts. So you need to like incentivize users to actually open up and register their own accounts. So if you from from what I know is the the Sean Outpost guys, uh, there's a group of people uh, affiliated with them that are quite active on the, the internet. So. I don't. I'm just missing. So, so why can't you? Why, why don't you just convert to BTSX and to BTC, send uh, Sean's outpost uh, the donation, and then public publish the transaction fee once you do it, or the transaction ID. Yeah, that has a very yeah. The reason is transparency because everything that is on the blockchain in BitShares X can be seen from anybody. I can just give you a transaction ID and you can check. Um, I also have, as you might have seen, uh, um, some kind of an, 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 a backend running on, on the website that is regularly updated. So you can really see the online transactions of my, my wallet that contains those uh, um, delegates and the payout addresses. And uh, the issue is once I send the funds to an exchange, I cannot give you access to what happens within the exchange. So no one will be able to check what happens on the exchange. That is the big issue. I, I do not think you need that level of transparency. I mean, we know how much money you make in BTSX. And if someone wants to, to verify what you're doing, you know, they can take a reasonable guess at what, what you sold the, the uh, BTSX and the BTC, you know, and, and then, I mean, yeah, the. I mean, you, oh, you mean match up the two blockchains? So search on blockchain info and have a message there say this is the payout from uh, the BitShares uh, client or something, Xerox from BitShares client. I yeah, just so don't it, uh, think you need that, that that level of transparency. I mean, it just it's just stupid. You know, it adds too much workload and just doesn't really you know isn't really needed. Actually, it does not really increase the workload because I plan to make this a little more automated. So, for example, getting the, the, the delegate pay out of the delegates into a payout address, changing this with, with the market orders into BitUS dollars. And once I have the BitUS dollars, I can, I can distribute them writing a single, yeah, using the RPC interface and distribute them all over. And everyone can see everything because I, because I published the transaction history. Um, this is one issue, the transparency. I, I know this is, might be a little too much transparency. I could go for Bitcoin and do it for my own. And I'm sure most people would trust me with this. The second thing why I'm, I chose this way is basically because of um, some um, PR actually. I'd like, I will not ask Sean's Outpost to state that they got some bit US dollars from us and everything went fine, converting them into US dollars and spending them for whatever they do. Um, but I, I guess and this is what I, how I think these people are, is they probably gonna write at least a Reddit post about this, how they made an experience with this. And uh, with this post, maybe there will come some, some extra PR and interest about what we are doing in, in the pictures ecosystem. Well, I'm like, can, yeah, if you can find someone that that's well, I mean, I'm sure you can, but someone who's willing to take the donations in either BTSX or Bit, Bit USD, then yeah, you're you're right. You should definitely uh, go for that. I so, have a, a a link in the chat bar below. It's a draft letter I wrote today. Just quickly wrote down. Uh, if you want, go over it. Correct as much if as you want, and maybe add things. Um, you want that are maybe necessary for the receivers of those donations. These letters are intended, for example, for Sean's output to establish a first contact feel if they if they are 
interested in getting BitUS dollars if they if they have any problems exposing the private key to to the BitShares client and and things like this is more like I will probably not send money to an address without knowing that they are interested to, to redeem that and they are interested to put the private key into the the client so you have you have five hundred dollars so far um, allocated or, or not allocated but earned roughly. earned yep yep I mean they would have to redeem that that, that that's a, a very nice donation for them um, well, it's just going mean, to get larger you just, too. You just, you just have to walk them through. I, I, like, the, what, what do they do? They get them B tier, and then they can see it. I mean, we, we have to work, and this is just just one of the many things that do. It's kind of an educational thing, but but so that they they, they can redeem it. But I mean, they're going to go out of their way to redeem five hundred dollars if you if you donate the, the full five hundred to them. And I, I don't know if you should do that. But, That's probably um, going to be about one hundred fifty dollars for the first shot. And then, okay, but, but I think we just need, in, need to work in, on in, in his case, it's a continuous uh, feed. Yeah, it's, so uh, it's always going to be uh, added on to. Yeah, because it's how, part of the mining fees. So how yeah, does a person uh, convert BitUSD? So so right now, so they would, is, is that how they do it? They get get them B tier, or or can you can you sell it to the client? Yeah, then you, on, you have to go to BTC and then then cash out, right? Nah, in the, in the link below you see the letter, and I had I have a a, a walkthrough, a very short walkthrough, uh, to the client, and um, I actually tell them to, for example, go to BTER, where you can directly uh, convert uh, bit US dollars into US dollars, and I think I'm not so sure. I I'm not the US dollar guy, but I'm pretty sure that. From BTER, if you have, if you hold US dollars in that exchange, you can get it out of that exchange easily. That's my guess. I'm not sure. Maybe you know. I don't. I don't. I would be surprised. It might just be like a. I I don't know. Maybe maybe BTER does do um, financial dealings with banks. I'm not positive, but I'm I'm pretty sure that what all that the the usd does on an exchange is essentially enables you to hold your um funds and fiat for times of when you expect great volunteer volatility in crypto i don't think that you can actually cash out from those exchanges in yeah. Okay. The fiat. I mean, I don't see how they would do it other than maybe to send it to, you, have you know. You to go to like Coinbase or one of these places that yeah. specifically deals in BTC. Exactly. There's always, okay. you know, it, it'll be from Bit, BitUSD to, I guess, directly to BTC on BT or, and then once they have BTC, I mean, you know, if you just, if you deal with people who do crypto, so, I mean, it's really just a matter of they still use BT or but they can't get the US. They can't get actual fiat from from BT or I, I don't think. Yeah, that's exactly. Okay. Yeah, they have to use an outside service. So there's there's an one extra step so that they need to basically convert the BitUS dollars first in BTC before they can get those out as regularly because they are usually also getting. Well, the BTC. thing is, you can leave that choice up to them if they yeah, right. want to do with them, but. Uh, as you said, there are two options. One is to ask them to uh, enter their own private key, and, but that may be something that they are not prepared to do. The other thing is ask them if they want to register their own address on the blockchain. Yeah, but the that gives... Bit shared blockchain. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I probably gonna ask first if they were interested to import their private key. If they say no, then I can go maybe for, for another way. But then well, I probably well, need a signed message from them that they own this particular account name because otherwise I can't, yeah, just prove to the yeah. other guys that yeah, it's okay. Sean's outpost, you know. The nice thing about the Titan system is that they can call it Sean's outpost and claim it on this system and not just a number. Right. You know, and if, if it's not Sean's outpost, I think it kind of points to what we need. We need like a uh, someone where we can donate to someone that will take uh, either BitUSD or BTSX and and then we as a community can kind of you know push their cause and it's just kind of a uh, you know a good thing to do 
So it's just kind of, you know, so it's kind of a matter of just finding someone to that we can trust, and you know, a legitimate charity, um, vet them properly, uh, but then have someone that will, you know, accept us directly, and then we can push that, and, you know, and it helps them out, and it, you know, it helps us get our name out there a bit more. I don't know. I mean, maybe it, sh it should be someone besides Sean's outpost, if you know, for whatever reason, if there's a better alternative. What do you guys? What do you guys think to the the alternative might be just, I mean, letting them know, hey, yeah, sure, you can hold actual U.S. dollars, but you're not going to gain interest on it, uh, holding it in your in your bank account. And what's worse, uh, we're certain right now that they're actually writing legislations to re legislation to to be able to take money out of American bank accounts uh, to quote unquote bail in banks and protect them from all the ridiculous things they've been doing. Um so you you almost have this this perfect situation where now Sean's outpost could essentially have an incentive to hold the the uh, they, they won't. They, they won't. won't they won't. They don't even hold the bitcoins they get. They exchange them for US dollars no matter what the rate is. Because really? they need them, yeah. Because they need the money, and uh, oh. they're using the money. So this is not the matter of holding bit US dollars. They will never do it. And I know Roger. that it's, it's 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 okay like that because they have better things to do with the money than holding sure. it in a band and speculating with it. Yeah. And and uh, another thing, um, Sean's outpost will not be the only one that yeah. uh, will receive uh, funds. So I have these uh, almost 500 bit US dollars. I think about giving 150 to Sean's outpost, 150 to Armani Kinderdorf, and 100 US dollars to uh, the Electronics Frontier or Foundation. Foundation. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the EFF. Yeah, I have a list on this of those on the on the board. If you, if you check for the bootstrapping charity topic, I have a list there, and also the link to this letter I, I wrote. And um, there's a very particular reason I chose those three for the moment because they publish a Bitcoin address. Some others I I found use uh, Coinbase or. BitPay and they generate a, a new Bitcoin address for every donation and stuff like that. And I want to have a public, publicly known, publicly known Bitcoin address so that I can do all these transparency stuff with the pub keys and stuff like that. You know. Well, there, there's then I think it might be uh, best to get them to register on the chain on our chain. And yeah, just that it won't cost them anything. They just need to register. Uh, we'll they, send it to them, but for them it's free money. Yeah, they basically will have to register an own account because, as I told you, we I registered for them a sub-account below the charity account. And as I own the charity account, I can rewrite or overwrite the, the public key that is, uh, or the active key that is bound to the sub-account. As far as I know, I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I can, I could rewrite those addresses. So basically, the the sub account is really just used for payouts from charity payouts to them, so that it is also seen in in my uh, transaction history. And then they should take it out, put it into their own account, and do whatever they want with it. That is my plan. I'm not so sure whether it's going to work out well, but yeah. That's oh, it's probably a different what... idea. You you give them access to your one of your accounts instead of you having access to one of their accounts. I don't have access to that account. It's just registered below my main account. It's a sub account to which I do not have the private key. I cannot I cannot access anything in there. Ah, um, okay. But, but in I that can case, you the... really must to make sure that they will work together. Otherwise, they will, you're destroying the coins instead of a. Uh... Right. right. That's them. why I that's why I ask them to import the private key, check whether the account name appears in their wallet. And once it's there, then now it's working you can, and I can send them to them. Um, the public key registration from prior from from Bitcoin addresses, I, I checked this with one of my own uh, addresses and that worked very well. 
but sure, I need to to make sure that it's working with, with those uh, private keys uh, too. Yeah, sure. I'm not gonna send uh, it to an address where I'm. I cannot be sure that anyone has a, a private key for. Yeah. Uh, uh, get, the easiest for them would be to uh, to import the private key, but I yeah. Uh, I, w I could understand why they would be hesitant to do that if that was their only uh, form of income. Have you yes. guys can have you considered uh, talking to them about potentially like working together as far as uh, letting you know what they spent the BT uh, the the BitUSD on like or what projects that it's helped them enable or you know maybe not necessarily uh directly what that has helped enable but almost like give them almost like an outlet to advertise what they've been doing uh, yeah yeah and uh, this is actually a really good place where i can kind of talk to what we are wanting to do with beyond bitcoin because um you can actually all register there i'm pretty sure right now um and you can essentially every user can create three delegates and you can actually have a delegate page where um or that this is what we're planning on doing or implementing right now where you'll be able to actually publish feeds uh essentially on you know like for instance xerox if you're doing that they can actually provide updates on what they're doing and kind of create like a it almost would be like a pr move you know where they're saying you know yeah sure you know we would send this to you without you giving us the money but now that you're giving us the money we'll guarantee you that we're going to send you updates on what we're doing and things like that and then it would actually help for pr with with your delegate and for the broader bitshares ecosystem and then from within the ecosystem uh the beyond bitcoin ecosystem as a user people can go on and actually propagate that on social media channels and earn X points and del if delegates were to, you know, volunteer a small percentage of their funds that they, their transaction fees to like a, a common pot, essentially, we could essentially have it where people could use their X points and transfer them into DAX shares in different DAX and BTSX and BitUSD or whatever they want to turn it into within the BitShares ecosystem. So it would essentially enable you, Xerox, if you have three different charity delegates, to really get your name out there. Because if people really, like for me, I know for a fact I would be looking at the EFF one every time I can I get the opportunity. And if there's something really cool that the EFF's doing, I'm going to post it to um, my Twitter account. I'm going to tweet it out and I'm going to put it into the fa my Facebook account and so on and so forth which if you have a number of people doing that, you are actually paying people to be active citizens, which in democracy nowadays, you actually almost have to pay to be able to do that stuff. You know, you have lobbyists who actually do this stuff. Um, so uh, where do you guys stand on that type of system? Basically, I like where this is heading, but I'm probably going to go for the passive way. I will send out the money to those uh, charity um, organizations without any strings attached. It uh, would be nice if they wrote something about PR, but they I will not force them to get the money. This is uh, basically no strings attached. They can do with it whatever they want. I do not want any uh, anything in return. Um, sure. Yeah, sure. The, the but... rest is optional and yeah. Yeah, and that's, yeah. I'm actually not, what I'm actually saying is not to force them to do that. Essentially, if you look at, for instance, like EFF is a good example. EFS, EFF has their own website. Um, they, they actually have their own feeds on, you know, news on what they're, you know, things that are interesting that they are working on or things uh, that they're helping to fight to protect the internet in certain specific ways. So, it would be very easy to actually um, post that stuff to the delegate account to kind of like show people, you know, hey, look, this is what's going on. I don't know if there would be the opportunity to potentially like pay people to post stuff about that stuff. Uh, I don't know. Like these are things that 
uh, we no still need to look at. But that's kind of why I'm bringing it up here is because yeah. I think I have answers to a lot of it, but there are certain places where I'm a little bit stuck and there are places where I might be wrong. So, it, it, you know, I guess what, what I guess I could say is it's almost reaching the like an alpha stage where people can start uh, looking around and playing with it and see what they what they if there are any changes that they would like to see made and let Jabba know. Um, what, uh, what we could do is uh, if they have questions about how to use the uh, the wallet and stuff like that, maybe offer the mumble as a secure encrypted channel to talk about stuff like that. Yeah, sure. That's so yeah, maybe uh, Sean's uh, outpost is a little bit uh, troubled by government uh, interference. So having an encrypted uh, talk server that's not owned by Google might be uh, interesting to them as well. That's actually one of the reasons I chose Mumble, but uh, as opposed to Google <laughs> you, Hangouts. You knew it was encrypted then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a conspiracy guy, man. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> so That's then who is Data Security Node? <laughs> um, Data Security Node, actually. Just he's... kidding. <laughs> just oh, kidding. oh, okay. Well, <laughs> just for those who don't know, Data Security Node has... Um, a bunker. He's he's living in a bunker, man. And he doesn't live in it, but he works in it. He's actually thinking about offering delegate services that are extremely secure. I mean, to the level of security that would you know protect from EMP attacks and stuff like that. Um, Plus, uh, he's not uh, subject to the Patriot Act, which is huge. Um, and. I think you know. I think he would be charging something similar to what Amazon or DigitalOcean would charge for a node, but uh, it comes with you know a lot of benefits too. I mean, I I'm of the belief that it would be nice to have you know maybe fifteen or twenty of those nodes running, uh, those types of nodes running on every DAC just in case of you know a severe emergency type of situation like an EMP attack that really like takes out a solar lot of flare. <laughs> yeah, who oh, yeah. knows. But these but are... solar flares are not that uh, far out of possibilities. Yeah, no. really. No, no, um, I know uh, I had a lightning storm a couple of weeks back and that killed parts of my motherboard, my my phone and I was sick myself. Well, okay. that wasn't even a lightning strike. It was just the thunderstorm passing overhead. You just, sure? Uh, you sure it wasn't you and you're just like electrical manliness walking <laughs> by it? Oh, uh, man. <laughs> I've, I haven't read enough cartoons and uh, comic books. Uh, it's a funny thing. Only the uh, Japanese and Americans have this superhero stuff, the mutant stuff. Europe doesn't really have that. Uh, no, I'm just we talking have, about. Uh, I'm just talking about um, static electricity from the chest hair. <laughs> from hair on my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I just wanted to let you guys know um, about that as far as data security because he was he's actually wanting to accept BitShares X for the services too. Just so you guys all know, oh, yeah. like these are things that I mean. You might want to run your own, but this is an option, and I think that he's actually hoping to eventually create it, set it up so there are images where it's like a wizard, where you can create your own delegate through them, like three or four clicks. In, uh, in this sense, if there are uh, active activists with uh, funding ideas and in charity options, then maybe they can be hooked up with data security to see if part of their uh, collection fees are used to keep up their uh, Delegate, but the delegate is funding these uh, charities. Maybe that's an option. Yeah, there's. A, I know that he's he's looking at opportunities, and he thinks he's kind of in the place where but we that's, all are. That's different from what Xerox is doing. Xerox is doing more uh, more uh, high level. More. Uh, he's not uh, locked into a single type of uh, charity at the moment. No, Roger. Basically. I also must, I mean, I, to be honest, I originally didn't really plan to also give money to, to the Electronics uh, Frontier Foundation. 
Um, my original plans, and I probably will go back to them again, is to focus on um, humanity, humanity um, charity only. So, for example, the Armani Kinderdorf or uh, even Sean's Outpost, or there's probably also some things about cancer research and, um, and clean water projects and stuff like this. Yeah, disaster relief, stuff like that. 